now that we're done with the chloride shift and the reverse chloride shift there are only a couple things more that we need to discuss about um, the respiratory system and so here's your summary of oxygen and co2 exchange and transport let's take a look at first at oxygen remember that at the level of the alveoli we have a partial pressure of oxygen of 100 millimeters of the mercury and in the tissues we're going down to 40 millimeters of the mercury we're going back and forth between 100 and 40 millimeters of the mercury when it comes to the transport of co2 we're going to switch back and forth between 40 and 46 millimeters of the mercury so at the level of the alveoli we have a partial pressure of co2 of 40 millimeters of the mercury and in the tissues we have 46 millimeters of the mercury and that's pretty much the summary here uh, the oxygen transport of course the is mostly the oxygen is mostly bound to hemoglobin and then um, a, a minor amount two percent less than two percent is uh, dissolved in the plasma of the blood the co2 transport summary is right here where the vast majority is carried as bicarbonate and then we have 23 percent as a, a carb amino hemoglobin and then about seven percent dissolved um, as gas in plasma now let's take a look at the um, reflex control of ventilation and basically in the brain stem you have your cardiovascular and your respiratory control centers and they are the masters of your next breath and also of your heart rate so in the medulla oblongata and in the pons region you have these cardiovascular control centers that will measure constantly co2 levels oxygen ph levels and then initiate the next breath the summary of this slide here is that the one parameter that you are measuring very very closely is co2 and with the co2 it's also the ph as you know this association so co2 and ph levels they go together and they're very very closely monitored as soon as the co2 levels get up just a little bit then your respiratory control center will initiate an express by sending a message to the diaphragm to contract and so therefore you will inhale the next breath of air you don't have to worry about this this is under autonomic control and these chemoreceptors measuring constantly co2 levels and they will initiate the next breath even if you're asleep and you don't have to monitor that that's an automatic response so the regulation of ventilation here is that the respiratory neurons in the medulla control inspiratory and expiratory muscles and the neurons in the pons integrate sensory information and interact with medullary neurons to influence ventilation and the rhythmic pattern of breathing arises from a neural network of spontaneously discharging neurons Ventilation is subject to continuous modulation by chemoreceptor and mechan mechanoreceptor linked reflexes and by higher brain centers. And with the higher brain, brain centers, we mean that's your cardiovascular and respiratory control centers. These are lumps of cells in your brainstem that will control your breathing in this case. Uh, the chemoreceptors, the most important ones that you have are the ones that monitor CO2 and pH levels. So here is your brain stem, and there you have these, um, um, these are your higher brain centers right there. And uh, you have your um, cardiovascular and your respiratory control centers here that will measure the amounts of CO2 in this case. Mostly it's the CO2 levels. You don't need to know about all the details of all of this, but just keep in mind that uh, in your brain stem you have these centers that are controlling your respiratory rate and it's mostly the levels of co2 that are measured and that then control the message to the diaphragm for the next breath to contract so that you can inhale air so the regulation of ventilation we have peripheral chemoreceptors these chemoreceptors they measure co2 ph levels and oxygen levels with these two being much more sensitive than oxygen which is surprising because most of us we always think that uh, we worry about our oxygen levels but in terms of chemoreceptors and reporting uh, 
for and the initiation of the next breath, um, your pH levels and your CO2 levels are much more important. So we have these C uh, central chemoreceptors, and they measure mostly changes in CO2. This is very, very important. You can try this out and see how important it is and how um, how quickly your body will respond by hyperventilating. You can voluntarily try to hyperventilate, and it will only take about 10 seconds before you start feeling dizzy. And that feeling comes from your brainstem freaking out because you're exhaling way too much CO2, and the CO2 that you exhale that acts like an acid, it will end up increasing your pH levels, and your brainstem is getting to the point where it's thinking we're going to shut this person down. So um, hyperventilation, just for 10 seconds, you can already feel the effect. So you can try that out. Just don't try more than 10 seconds, but just try to feel get that feeling for it. So here uh, would be some more regulation here. This is about the glomo cells and the carotid bodies. Honestly, um, I think we should skip over this because you're not being tested on this. And so you can take a look at this um, at your leisure, but this is not important as far as um, test is concerned. So no questions about that. Now here, this is more important, the chemoreceptor response. And keep in mind, here's your all-important equation that CO2 and water combines to form carbonic acid, and the carbonic acid dissociates into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. Note that the arrows are going in both directions. That means this, this reaction is completely reversible, and it just depends on concentration gradients which way um, the, the reaction is going to proceed. So if there's a whole lot of CO2, then we're going to form a lot of carbonic acid and a lot of bicarbonate ions. If there's not enough CO2, then we're going to push the equation back from the bicarbonate ions to form water and CO2. So it's all about the balance of these concentrations. And can, central chemoreceptors, they're very sensitive to CO2. They will sense the, the changes in CO2 if there are any. So here, for example, a stimulus is given, plasma concentration of CO2 increases, and then what are we setting in motion? The point is, if your levels of CO2 are increasing, you need to take your next breath. You need to exhale that extra CO2. So your key central chemoreceptors right here, they will monitor this constantly, and they will send message to the respiratory control center to, in the case of increased CO2, we're going to increase ventilation. So increased CO2 will lead to increased ventilation. And um, this goes on constantly. If your CO2 levels are just creeping up just a little bit, um, you will t take your next breath. And finally, our last slide, some protective reflexes that we have to guard the lungs. Um, of course, if you have some sort of a physical injury or irritation, uh, you are going to cough or have some, definitely some irritation. I'm sure all of us have experienced that. If you get the wrong stuff into the trachea, everybody is just coughing, and it's just a very uncomfortable feeling. Um, bronchial constriction can happen if you have um, some irritant receptors in the airways uh, that send signals to sensory neurons. Um, that's basically also a coughing kind of response. You may also have some allergic reactions that can lead to bronchial constriction. And then um, everybody has experienced sneezing and coughing. These are reflexes that try to get rid of stuff that's um, bothering you. So it could be trapped dust particles, it could be trapped bacteria, some pathogens that maybe have destroyed cells and now you're sneezing it out. It's actually a way for pathogens to go, to go from one host to the next, um, sneezing. As you know, right now with the COVID-19 going around, um, coughing it out, sneezing it out, that will be droplets that are being released that contain lots of viruses, and that's how a virus then spreads very easily. The hearing boyer, uh, inflation reflex, um, that's a reflex that is designed to prevent overinflation of your lungs. Now, this concludes our discussion of the respiratory system. Please review this along with the lab material.
for the respiratory lab and uh, you should be doing fine on the on the lab quiz on this also um there's a lot of material in here just focus um just go through the different sections of this lecture and um, write your own notes. It's not really difficult on the respiratory system, but it is quite a bit of material. A lot of students have problems with the um, chloride shift and the, refer the reverse chloride shift, so make sure that you understand that. Also, the oxygen binding to hemoglobin. So uh, there's, there's some information here. It's not the most difficult chapter, but it does have some amount of information. So just uh, go through the lectures, write your own notes. You should be fine.